Well, welcome back. I have the pleasure of sitting down with Mike Cecilia, president of Oracle Industries. Mike, thank you so much for spending time with us today. Thank you for having me. Always great to be back on Oracle TV. Well, you have such a unique perspective and one that is I, I want to tap into to get your view of how Oracle is leading this evolution of healthcare. Because when you look at the full stack, you're looking at it not just through the healthcare lens, but also across industries. So first off, let's talk about that view. And so when you look at Oracle Health and Life Sciences as a whole, what excites you most? What innovation excites you most for the industry? We- well, obviously, AI is, uh, you know, we, we think core, uh, core and, and fundamental to uh, the future of better experiences with the technology for both patients and providers, and we hope better patient outcomes. What I think is really uh, interesting is that we've been able to borrow a lot of applied AI, a lot of applied patterns that are already in use in other industries. So, for example, uh, we spoke a lot uh, so far at the conference here, and we'll have more to say about our semantic database and our knowledge graph. And what does that mean? Well, that means that we understand the relationships between data, not just data, not just the data itself. And why is that so important? Well, you want to make clinical decisions. You want to make sure that you're understanding that you know, that whole patient and everything about that patient that you need, not just a a bunch of flat files or faxes that have come in. We're using that very same technology in our banking industry today to do financial crimes and anti-money laundering investigations. So it's that knowledge graph, that database, that neural network, and think about that neural network graph we may be familiar of applying that to healthcare. Our hospitality industry has been, you know, a wonderful contributor to our new patient portals, understanding how consumers, in this case, patients wish to interact with systems. What are what are the uh, things that we can do to actually have people have an enjoyable experience with the technology, which is not always the case in, in healthcare right. consumer facing technology. So, uh, look, we're super excited. Uh, we know AI is fundamental, but we have so many great experiences where it's already been applied and we're now applying that to healthcare. And uh, we hope continue to generate lots of excitement. Well, so then specific to AI, how is our approach different than our competitors? Yeah. Well, our, our competitors are largely training or, or, or attempting to train some sort of AI models on a bunch of static old data, uh, which is very, very different. And they're looking at only their data. We're looking at a platform approach and we're looking at all of the data the customer has. We'd love to help the customer uh, further refine and train these AI models based upon the universe of data. That could be from our EHR. That could be from competitor EHRs. That could be from other systems, imaging systems, all the systems that are in use across the hospital, for example. All of that's fair game to vectorize. And we bring that together and we can further extend these AI models. And we're also making it available through public APIs. Huge difference with our competitors saying that uh, not only are we going to help you organize this data, not only are we going to help you make a knowledge graph from this data, but you, your partners, your informatics team, you can all create your own agents on top of this yourself using the Oracle AI Agent Studio. We don't even need to be involved. So I think that's just, a uh, again, a, a huge differentiator. So then go a little bit further, and how is that approach helping organizations address challenges of today and tomorrow? Yeah. Well, I think the, the, the way in which it's, it's happening is that it allows organizations to to act at a speed and a scale that they never could have acted uh, on prior to this technology being available. Imagine being in a patient room with a, with a, a, a Euro doctor and you're taking care of a patient. Imagine not only having their longitudinal record, all their data, but having it summarized in a way that makes sense. Also, imagine we have ingest all the latest clinical research about that particular person's condition at the point of care and have the AI model actually help you make trained um you know, to have the AI model having making suggestions to you as a provider to say, here's some things to think about. Here's the latest clinical research. And by the way, uh, another thing which becomes sometimes a, a, a practical barrier, here's what the insurance company is willing to pay for, having all of that available at the point of care. So it's not just the EHR data. It's not just static data. It's understanding how that patient operates and interacts with the entire healthcare ecosystem and delivering that in a contextually aware, natural language voice-driven approach that providers and patients can interact with. Well, that is care that dreams are made of. So that's a very exciting. And when you think about our partners, you know, what's their role in this? Yeah. Well, they have, they're, 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 they're lots of roles that, you know, I think the biggest thing uh, right now, the biggest opportunity for our partners is to think about the change management. And we're talking about a, a generational leap. And, and maybe that's not even the right way. To, maybe I'm understanding it. Just a, a stark difference between systems today that have largely automated paper processes to systems of intelligence, decision support systems. So so as a, as a provider, it's not really about getting trained on how the new system works because the new system is very intuitive. 
you essentially just have to be able to talk with the system. As a patient, you ha you essentially need to be able to communicate whichever language you you choose to communicate in in a natural language approach with your healthcare record with your with your patient mm -hmm. portal. But what organizations I think do need help with, where partners can help, is what's the thought leadership? What's the art of the possible? And uh, how do we get everybody comfortable with this uh, with this new era of technology? So lots of opportunity there. So today you shared the stage with OpenAI and you spoke about the changes you're going to make to the patient portal. Can you tell us a little bit more about that? Yeah. Well, I mean, how many times have you gotten a test result? Um, you go to a provider. I do this right after this. And you get a lab that's a little bit out of bounds. You, you get a, you, you get a particular test result that's out of bounds. Is the first thing you do? You go you paste that into you paste that into some right. some AI portal online. You say what does this mean? And the the large language model in that case does its best to tell you what that means and what it could mean. All the things that could go wrong, all the possible diagnoses you may have, but it has zero context because it only has that. It doesn't have your labs over time. It doesn't have your doesn't have your your contextual and organized history. Right. And uh, doesn't understand your social determinants of health, doesn't understand all the things that could be impacting that particular lab and mostly um, isn't really going to give you any comfort because it doesn't know a whole lot about you. Right. All it knows is you pasted in a lab result and this could mean 55 different things. And here are all the possible things that this could mean. That's actually not comforting for patients. Sometimes it does exactly the opposite. Right. Mm. So what we're working on and what we showed today uh, using uh, integration with the open AI, open AI um, APIs is contextually aware cases. In other words, what should I be worried about? Is the and I'm, when the answers are produced, they're keeping in mind that entire patient, all of the data, all of the information about that patient, saying this is the team that's working on it. This is what you should talk about your cardiologist with. This is what you should talk about your primary care physician with, and um, you know, stay stay course on your medicine. And here's a here's a draft interaction for you. And here's a, a cheat sheet, if you will. Here are all the notes that you should have when you go back into uh, and wow. tackle your providers next. Very different. And pasting a single lab result Absolutely. out of context uh, into an engine that's going to give you uh, a whole host of possibilities, overwhelming for patients today. It, the great changes. And, uh, you know, next up, I don't want to steal their thunder, but we're having a Cleveland Clinic talk to us. And so without talking about the work that we're doing with them, from your perspective, why do organizations like Cleveland Clinic, OpenAI, why do they want to partner with us? Well, we're supplying the entire stack. So we we, we are supplying all the core technology where, where uh, models are trained, inferencing takes place. Um, retrieval log management generation takes place. We're supplying the 23 AI database, which allows organizations to collect all of their data, not just their EHR data, but all of their data and any EHR data for that matter, not just our EHR data into, into a vectorized database so they can make it available. And then, of course, we have the back office applications, our fusion applications for HCM um, and, uh, and uh, you know, uh, supply chain management, general ledger, things like that, as well as the clinical applications like our life sciences, clinical trials applications, our, our uh, EHR applications. We are the only supplier in the world that has an entire stack. So if you want to talk about outcomes as an AI um, uh, provider, an AI for, uh, first provider like Legal Clinic or, or, or a major you know, AI supplier like, um, like OpenAI, we really believe that we have a very compelling platform in, into which you can demonstrate outcomes because otherwise you've got to stitch a bunch of stuff together. Uh, to make this work. So uh, we're excited about those partnerships too. <laughs> well, partnerships are critical to help us extend our own capabilities. So how do you see those advancing in the future? Yeah, I, I think, um, I, again, I, I think we're going to actually have uh, lots of new partners, um, you know, lo lots of partners who uh, who are experts on data organization, experts experts on outcomes. Um, and, and you really don't have to be a, a software engineer, computer programmer, to use the old terms, to be able to create your own, own AI agents. So we're going to see, I think, really close relationships with uh, with business partners, with clinical partners who may not have otherwise been technology partners. Mm. And again, I said this earlier, I, I think our customers are going to be able to create a lot of their own AI agents uh, right on top That's of great. these platforms themselves. Well, last question for you is that, it, you know, for all of the partners and customers tuning in, any last words? AI changes everything. Um, we're uh, we're thrilled to uh, to talk about not only the technology, but the game-changing outcomes that we think are mm -hmm. possible working together. And I know there's sometimes some fear. There's some fear around AI. Uh, there's some hesitation around AI. But when you see it in action and you can touch it and you can consume it, uh, we're, uh, we're very optimistic that uh, folks are going to love it. So we can't wait to engage with all of you. 
Well, I'm optimistic too. Thank you so much, Mike. And it was great to spend just a few minutes with you. Appreciate your time. Well, that's it here. We'll be back after this break.